good afternoon students today i am going to start with the, the lecture with the concept that is consideration of the components of the cellular systems okay as you have seen in this diagram this is the general view of your cellular communication system and this includes basically three components one is antennas second is your switching element switching equipment and third is your data links so the elements of the cellular mobile system design actually we have done already antennas we know that antennas some there will be some switching equipment like mtso or bsc so now we will consider the components that is mobile radios antennas cell site controller and mtso in detail actually these components also affect our system design if we are not choosing the right one the general view is shown and even though electronic industry associations and fcc has specified standards for radio equipment at the cell sites and mobile sites still but still we need some consideration of these components because these components actually affect the choice of antennas the switching equipment used and the data links used for the cellular systems now come on to the very first component of the cellular system is antennas actually antenna we know that is a basically important component various antenna parameters like antenna pattern antenna gain antenna tilting angle how much antenna height these all are affect the cellular system design the antenna pattern it can be your directional omnidirectional or any shape in both the vertical and the horizontal planes means your antenna can be your omnidirectional means in all the direction you can send the data or in the direction in a particular direction you can also send the data and then second parameter that is antenna gain actually it compensates the transmitted power different antenna patterns and different gains at the each cell site are available and these actually affects the system performance so that's why we should always consider these components in detail the antenna pattern actually in the cellular systems is different from the patterns that which are generated in the free space or seen in the free space if our mobile unit travels around a cell site in areas with many high height buildings the omnidirectional antenna will not duplicate the omni pattern means it will not give give us the ideal omni pattern and there is also a parameter in the antenna used is that is front to back ratio and this is the important parameter using the directional antenna is found 20 db only in free space and it is only 10 db actually on the cell side so we can understand that how these parameters should be uh, should be considered because actual and ideal positions or actual and ideal positions are different now the third parameter is antenna tilting actually antenna tilting at which angle we have to tilt our antenna it can reduce the interference due to the neighboring cells and also it enhances the weak spots in the cell and the last parameter under consideration in the antenna is antenna height 
so the antenna height of the or you can say also the height of the cell side antenna also affects the area and the shape of the coverage in the system so these parameters should be kept in mind while choosing an antenna four parameter one is antenna pattern second is antenna gain third is antenna tilting and the fourth one is antenna height now the second major component of the cellular system is switching equipment actually the capacity of switching equipment in cellular system is not based on the number of switch ports but also the processor which is associated with these switches if our cellular system is large then processor should be large and the cellular systems are actually unlike the other systems because we know that it is important to consider when switching equipment is reached to the its maximum capacity and the service life actually of the switching equipment is not determined by the life cycle of the equipment but by how long it takes to reach its full capacity and if our switching equipment is designed into the modules or as distributed switches then if our capacity is increased then these modules should be added to increase the capacity of the equipment for decentralized systems we can use digital switches that are more suitable also in future trends we are also utilizing the feature of hand off and switching equipment can link to the to the other switching equipment so that our call can be carried from one system to the another and our call should not be dropped that is from one cell site to another cell site hand off procedure is to be taken now the last one is data links the data links actually are not directly affected by the cellular systems but also these are also important under the consideration <laughs> sorry each data link can carry multiple channel data that is 10 kbps 10 kilobits per second and this data should be carried from the cell site to the mtso mtso stands for mobile telephone switching office and this fast speed data transmission actually can't be passed through our regular telephone line so data bank devices are needed in that case they can be used as multiplex manner also means many of data channels can be passed to the t carrier wire line also it can be it can use the microwave radial link and the microwave radio link frequency is very high that is 850 megahertz 
although we can use the microwaves it may be long term money saver but the availability of microwave link is to be considered so that's why we can use the t carrier so this was the explanation for the components of cellular systems that is antennas switching equipment and third is data links further we will do the next concept that is analog and digital cellular systems so this diagram shows actually the solid line shows the data and this shows the dotted line shows the voice and these all the functions we have already discussed i have already discussed with you with you so this uh, block will work as coordinates all the switch functions performing all the internet switching of calls then serves features implemented via software and the cell site actually locates the mobiles also managing the data communication with mobile and mtso that is mobile telephone switching office so this is the landline phone direct distant dialing network can be done and these all are the cell site okay next going further after summarizing this topic going further that is analog and digital cellular systems okay as you came to know from the name that analog cellular systems we have two types of cellular systems one is your analog cellular systems and second one is your digital cellular systems as you came to know from the name that analog cellular systems which uses the analog transmission analog techniques analog modulation so that's why that type of uh, that type of cellular systems are known as your analog cellular systems so analog cellular system is further classified into two that is nmt and ntt systems nmt stands for nippon telegraph and telephone corporation and your ntt ntt is your ntt stands for your nordic system so as you can see this is the one of the Jap japanese japanese mobile telephone service network configuration in which we are using the analog cellular systems so ntt is here ntt is here nippon telegraph sorry ntt is here nippon telegraph and telephone corporation and your nm t is your nordic system so i will discuss with each and one one by one where this is the japanese uh, mobile telephone system rc for our regional center dc is is district center tc stands for toll center in this diagram eo is end office amc automobile switching center mcs mobile control station mbs stands for mobile base station and mss stands for mobile subscriber station now i will discuss so this is the analog system and this is used by the japanese so this system is analog system is used in japan so it is operated as 800 megahertz landline telephone system and put it into the service in the tokyo in 1979 the general system operation is similar to actually amp system amp is a your amp is your analog mobile phone system this is the based upon the analog so also it assesses the 40000 subscribers in the 500 cities this system 
this japanese systems assesses actually 40000 subscribers in 500 cities and this covers the 75% of all japanese cities and 25% of inhabitable areas and it covers the 60% of population in Jap japanese system mobile telephone service we have nine esc that is automobile switching centers 51 mobile control station that is mcs and 465 mobile base stations that is mbs and the 39000 mobile subscriber stations that is mss this is standard and this was operated uh, with these specifications during the february 1985 so also with the 30 megahertz spectrum and the number of channels used in japanese is 600 and each channel bandwidth was your 25 kilohertz actually at present, there is no competitive situation set up by government by for using this system. However, actually, the Japanese Ministry of Post and Telecommunication is considering the providing a dual competitive situation that is similar in the United States. Second one analog system is here was implemented in the united states that is united kingdom in june 1982 it uses the the uk system uses the tax this is also analog cellular system that is tax stands for total access communication system and it was operated with the 1000 channels having the channel bandwidth as 25 kilohertz and it uses also the 600 channels and 400 was were reserved so these were the actually analog cellular system uses by the united kingdom also the another version for that is which uses the 300 spectra channels that was cellnet next system in the analog is canadian system in 1978 aurora designed by the alberta government telephone and it was operated as 400 megahertz so first version was Ayora is 400 system and it covers the 40,000 subscribers with the 40 channels and with the frequency reuse capability. But it has, it is not provided with the handoff capability. So next analog version for the iora is 800 system this is uses the 800 megahertz and handoff capability is implemented in this system so this is was the under the year ntd next is your NMT. NMT is your Nordic system and it was mostly followed by the Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Finland and it was a pretty at 450 megahertz and 800 megahertz will be implemented soon. So, Ayora 800 system converted our 450 
hundred meg four fifty megahertz to the eight hundred megahertz, having the two hundred channels, and total bandwidth allowed is twenty ten megahertz. Each channel bandwidth is twenty five kilohertz, and having the handoff and roaming capabilities also. Actually, it covers. It also uses the repeaters to increase the coverage, and also the subscribers covered by this is one lakh. Next is cellular phones. Now come on to the next analog cellular system is a European cellular system. And this was established in 1945 with the zero generation. That is zero G G. Then after this one G, two G, three G, four G, five G. So these generation mobiles, like mobile telephone services, were not cellular actually in that, and they are not providing the handover from base station to the next base station. Also, the frequency reuse capability is not there. and all the european systems uses this like other analog cellular systems under the european cellular system is benelux country network then france then spain france is operated at 160 megahertz and covering the 10000 subscribers spain is on 450 megahertz and each ban channel bandwidth is 25 kilohertz then also australia uses the nmt and covering the 30000 subscribers then germany also uses the under the european cellular systems and it has uses the under cell sites then switzerland also uses the nmt at 900 megahertz and covering the 12000 subscribers then last is cordless phones so zeors that is the inventor from the cleveland ohio recognized actually the father of cordless phone and this was under the consideration in 1966 and giving the full duplex wireless communication operators that is two way communication so these all were the analog cellular systems now come on to the next is digital cellular systems actually digital cellular systems are those systems in which we are using the digital communication techniques like modulation transmission demodulation all are done digitally there are some of the characteristics of the features of the digital cellular system first is it is offering effective data transmission as compared to analog because it uses the packet switching in place of circuit switching where dedicated link is established between the sender and the transmitter in circuit switching there should be a dedicated link between a sender and the transmitter second is digital cellular systems can apply the error detection and correction techniques so that it combats the effect of your noise fading and interference on the signal but this capability is not available in your analog next security is always there because encryption decryption techniques can be applied also it uses the less transmit power if 
transmit power is used less then it increases the battery life and the range of services provided by the digital cellular systems are are large that is it covers more area speed is also high because it supports the high capacity data transfers the digital cellular systems also employ the tdma technique that is multi time division multiple access techniques in which different users uses the different time slots to send their data for the communication purpose so this is the digital cellular system and next is some examples means which systems are digital cellular systems first is gsm and the full form for that is global system for mobile second example is natdma that is north american time division multiple access third is cdma co division multiple access then next is pdc that is personal digital cellular and last is 800 dcs these all are under the category of your digital cellular systems in actually in 1992 first digital cellular system was deployed in germany that was gsm it was actually a european standard system and in case of united states natdma that is also categorized as is in term standard 54 and cdma is in term standard 95 developed in the united states natdma was deployed in 1993 and cdma was 1995 and the japanese pdc is a japanese system and it was deployed in osaka in june 1994 so this was the discussion about the digital cellular systems now next is comparison of your analog and digital cellular systems actually we know that cellular systems of both of two types analog or digital and under the analog we have amps tax nft these all are your analog but in under digital we have gsm cdma pcs these all are digital now the major difference what is the major difference between these two the major difference between these two system is that how we can send our voice signal between the phone and the pay station if actually it is like an audio cassettes and cds the audio cassettes were your analog and cds that is compact discs are your digital also audio which we are we are at the microphone we know that when i am doing call to someone my audio will be transmitted through the microphone so audio at the microphone always starts with the voltage level that varies continuously over the time and if my in my audio high frequencies are there so it will cause the rapid changes and low frequencies causes the slow changes in analog we are directly modulate our audio like fm in fm that is frequency modulation fm radio but 
in fm radio where our audio is converted just translated into the radio frequency signal but in case of digital we have to convert our audio signal into the sampled form digitized form using the sampling theorem and we are taking the 8000 samples per second so our data is transmitted in the form of ones and zeros and at the receiver side again this data is to be recovered using the sampling theorem that should that is fs to sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 fm where fm is your maximum frequency in the modulating signal the second difference is with analog transmission interference also translated into the recovered signal means there is no check on that that there is no check on that our received signal is correct or not but in case of digital if our data is distorted we also put the extra data to help or detect or correct any error in our ones and zeros signal so this was the comparison between the analog and digital cellular systems with this we have completed this topic also now going further about the shape of the cell which are used for transmission that is marketing the shape of the cell which is responsible for for the transmission so if i am compiling this topic analog cellular systems and digital in analog we have amps tax nmt where are in case of digital we have gsm cdma pdc natdma and dcs also in analog if i will use top 30 markets it will be as used as considered as very large cities if i am dividing my area into the top 31 to 60 markets large size it will be considered as large size cities if i am taking 61 to 90 markets whole area from 61 to 90 markets then medium size cities then 91 to 120 markets then it will be below my medium size cities and last top 120 to 150 markets will be small size cities these market areas are actually used in the united states so we have to plan according to that that how much msa rs required that is sorry rc regional center and msa rsa are required rs stand stands for rural statistical areas and msa stands for metropolitan statistical areas so this was the analog cellular systems and your digital cellular systems explanation now going further next is marketing image of hexagonal shaped cells next topic is marketing image of hexagonal shaped cells actually in this diagram first one sh shape show the hexagonal cells 
then ideal that is uh, hexagonal sh uh, shaped cells are fictitious fictitious second is circular that that is ideal and reality actually in reality practically we are getting the third shape that is real so signal coverage can be done by these ex these cells but from these most of the if we are planning we are going to plan a, a cellular system then we are taking the hexagonal cells as a reference there are some reason behind that for for taking this shape i will discuss with you in the next slide for that reasons for that firstly i will discuss this concept actually hexagonal shape communication cells are artificial fictitious that is fictitious and this type of shape can't be generated actually in the real world but ingenious draw these shaped cells hexagonal shaped cells to simplify the planning and designing the cellular system because it approaches to the circular shape that is the ideal power coverage area as you can see in the diagram the circular shapes have overlapped areas circles are overlapped with each other which causes the drawing unclear in that case hexagonal shaped cells are used with no gap and no overlap between the hexagonal cells actually in diagram you can see there are three cells and there is no gap in the case of hexagonal there is no gap or no overlap a simple mechanism which makes the cellular system implementation based upon the hexagonal cells is at least statistical approach actually the outcomes resulting from the real world situation and statistical approach are very close to each other so that's why we are using the hexagonal shaped cells for the analysis or the play or designing the cellular system now further in next time slide we came to know that why hexagon shape is used for radio coverage for a cell for the some of the reasons first is actually it covers the maximum area second is and the number of cells required for covering the area is fewer as compared to a circular shape third is it also approximates the circular radiation pattern means it gives the approximately circular radiation pattern and the fourth is this shape is perfect over your square circular or the triangle or the shapes because it covers entire area without the overlapping means that is no overlap or no gap between the cells so it covers the whole geographical region without any gaps or overlapping so these were the some of the reasons that's why we use the hexagonal shape for the radio coverage now the fourth one concept i will consider today is general description of the problem okay now going further with the concept that is general description of the problem actually the main limitation in the cellular system is actually the use frequency resources uses and 
if you have to can see the source is, is more than it will covers the greatest number of customers with the quality service but we know that frequency resources are limited and also based upon the concept of efficient spectrum utilization we can break our system design into many elements and we have to analyze these elements one by one the major elements are first is the concept of frequency reuse channel second is the co channel interference reduction fact factor and third is desired c by i ratio that is carrying to interference ratio fourth one is hand of mechanism and last is cell splitting actually the purpose is to introduce a simple methodology which enable us better understand how each one of five these elements affects our cellular mobile phone system on basis of that we have to ask our kept in mind three questions answers of three questions first is how many customers can a cellular system serve in the busy hours second how many new subscribers can be accommodate in our cellular system and third one is how many frequency channels do we need if we have more customers or the subscribers so these further we will consider the these factors one by one first is maximum number of calls per hour per cell actually this parameter tells us in one hour per cell if i am using one tower in an area in one hour per tower or per cell how many numbers of maximum number of calls will be handled and that should be calculated actually with the prediction so if predicted number of calls per hour per cell is if i am assumed to be as q then this will be depends upon the this factor will be depends upon the the parameters two parameters one is the size of the cell or you can say how much the area covers by that tower second is the traffic conditions traffic condition means how many customers are there which are doing the calls per hour per cell so the calls per hour per cell is based on how small the theoretical cell can size be and the control of coverage of small cells is based upon the technological development in the next slide this diagram shows the traffic capacity from a geographic map which is taken from the west los angeles 
actually if i am taking i am reducing the size of the cell 2 km cell it means it has the radius of 2 km it cover only 2 km area so if heavy traffic is there then it not be covered with the 2 km cells so it can it can't be served with the 2 km cells so in busy hour some of the cost will be dropped if i am taking the efficiency in the busy hours are as assumed to be as 0.8 then 28000 calls per hour based on average of one call is to be considered so actually this is an unrealistic case whereas we will find different queue in different geographic areas because where queue tells suppose about the number of calls and number of calls covered that depends upon the geographic areas covered now the next point is maximum number of frequency channels parcel the maximum number of actually frequency channels per cell n cell n is mainly related to the average calling time and i have already discussed with you average calling time is taken as 1.76 minute but the standard users calling habits may change as a result of the charging rate it means that if we put the plan it will cost according to the plan cost will be done average calling time will be depends upon the actually charging rate how much we are charged we have charged for the talk time if talk if this charge is less then we can do long talk time so also it depends upon the general income profile of the users the formula which is used for the offering the load is given by the a is equal to qi into t divided by 60 and the unit for that is erlangs so from that we can calculate the offering load and also on depending upon the offering load we can also find the required number of radio channels or the frequency channels per cell to be used with this formula we can also do the numericals okay students on the basis of that formula that is aqit by 60 i will
to one numerical that is the statement for the numerical is let the maximum calls per hour qi in one cell is to be 3000 and an average calling time to be 1.76 minute if i am taking the blocking probability as 2% then I have to find the offered load. As I've already discussed with you, the formula for the offered load is given by A is equal to QIT divided by 60. So now your QI is 3000. In this case, QI given is 3000. And T is 1.76. Average calling time is 1.76 is given. Divided by 60. After calculating this, I will get the offer load as 88. Offer load as 88. So, this was a numerical which is based upon the maximum number of frequency channels per cell. We can get the offering load. On the basis of that, we can choose the, take the number of frequency channels. We can also further calculate the offer load for the, for Various QI, that is maximum number of calls per hour with different QI, we will get the different load and with different load, we will take the different frequency channels. Okay, with this, I have completed this lecture. In the next lecture, I will discuss with you the frequency reuse channel concept. Okay, with this, I have completed this topic that is general description of the problem. In further, in next lecture, I will discuss with the concept frequency reuse channel. So, thank you. We will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.